Thursday, April 11th, and today we will cover the trades for Yieldmax funds, TSLY, CONY, MSTY, and NVDY. Uh, yesterday, the stock market tanked because, um, you know, they announced the numbers for these CPI, Consumer Price Index, and as expected, it rose more than they, what, you know, I guess the morons uh, in Washington are thinking. Um, but either way, it rose 3.5% for the 12 months ending March, a larger increase than the 3.2% increase for the 12 months ending in February. So I guess, obviously, they expected a much, well, I don't know who, the, I don't know who expected a much better result, but... You know, when you're when you're out here in the real world, we we all know the truth. The truth is, uh, inflation is going up. So I don't need a, I don't need like thirty minions that are overpaid with pensions to tell me this. Uh, so, pretty much like a waste of time. So either way, but the stock market, I would say, in my opinion, overreacted. They sold everything, <laughs> except you know, except crypto for the most part. Um, yeah, the stock market went down. But either way, that's the <clears throat> that's the update. Um, that's the update on the CPI report. It rose 3.5% for the uh, 12 months ending in March, okay? But, you know, we kind of all knew that. So that's not really a shocker. We didn't know the exact numbers, but we know it rose. Um, two trades yesterday, but before I get into that, someone I asked yesterday um, if anyone even cared uh, what trades I made for each day and I got overall uh, people said they were interested so here are my trades from yesterday um, again not financial advice but this is what I'm doing I bought YMAX, SVOL, HCOW, ULTI for the most part I dollar cost average down on all of them except HCOW HCOW is a different type of fund though they typically you know they have a lot of capital appreciation so I haven't had an opportunity to buy into them again, but they had a dip yesterday. So even though it was above my cost basis, I don't think I'm gonna see anything below my cost basis anytime soon. So I had an opportunity to at least buy 10 more um, and bring that up. That's a that's a lower yielder that has dividend growth and capital appreciation, some capital appreciation. The others are more more so dividend, uh, high yield dividends. Um, as well is more so, I guess, consistent dividends. I would, I, would, I would consider YMAX consistent dividends as well. Ulti is the high risk, high reward one. Um, so, so yeah, those are my purchases. YMAX, SVOL, HCOW, and Ulti. I bought 10 shares of each. So now, who made trades yesterday? Uh, Kony and Misty. So crypto, crypto. So for yesterday, for Kony, there was three transactions. Buy, call, sell, put, sell, call. So, you know, the usual. So more people are buying into the fund, which is good. So let's start with Kony. All right, they have a synthetic position of $250. They added to it yesterday. They added 500 contracts. And, you know, it's almost even the call, the call and the put, but they got more for the put, you know, higher credit than they had to pay for the call. Um, but coin is priced 99 cents above the synthetic strike of 250. Again, this expires on next Friday. So right now they're actually pretty much in the sweet spot. Um, you know, if they don't know what to expect, they could roll this and make $2.6 million on this transaction right now, or at least as of the close yesterday. So that's pretty good considering where we were not that long ago. So, so far, so good on the synthetic. Uh, overall, let's see how COIN did yesterday. As mentioned, uh, the CPI results tanked the stock market, except for crypto, at least from what I saw. I don't I didn't look at every single sector or stock. But um, COIN went up 3.31%, and Coney went up 2.75%. Obviously, you see kind of the, the gap there. So, they're, you know, we should be getting close to being capped. Um, but, you know, again, this one was a close one. We needed a little increase and we got it. Um, so we got it for the synthetic. So right now the synthetic looks good. So now we'll have to look at the weekly calls. But before that, they did add the 500 contracts um, with a 262.50 strike. 
but they chose next Friday as an expiration. Um, so that would give them seven trading days for this transaction. They only went 4.59% out of the money though, which was interesting. Um, they keep, they, they're keeping it tighter on Coney lately. Uh, that's a 2.41% yield. Uh, that's not bad, seven trading days. And they made about 302,000, again, as of right now. Outstanding shares did go up as usual. So with the interest continues on this fund. Uh, cash and treasuries, they moved cash into the negative because they shifted it around and moved it across treasuries and the money market bond, the money market fund. Um, but overall, cash and treasuries went up 12.5 million. All right, so recap. Uh, outstanding shares, 16225000 for Kony. Income for the weekly calls, $8.5 million. Total distribution for that income is $0.52 cents a share. Daily income, they're producing $0.09 cents a share. Daily yield is at 0.33%, which is awesome. Annualized yield is 122%. So not bad. Pretty, pretty amazing. All right, let's go to the active tab. Let's see if we're getting close to being capped. Kind of. Um, we still have a little room. But again, as we get closer to the out of the money, you know, you can see that we are slightly capped. Um, because, you know, when you sell calls, that's a bearish play. So as the stock goes up, you know, the calls that you have open, <coughs> again, time value will take it down too. So we have that on our side. Um, but that's why, you know, you, you kind of get a little more capped as you get closer to the strike price. Okay. If that makes sense. Anyway, we have 16,420 contracts. Obviously this is the biggest position Two fifty-seven fifty strike 2.59% out of the money, 500 contracts with a 262.50, 4.59% out of the money. But this one expires next Friday. The first one I mentioned expires in two days this Friday. <clears throat> so what do we want to happen for this week in particular i say a standstill um i say if coin stays at this price this is a perfect scenario because that would keep us obviously we can move up like two percent um but you know so i'll say stay here and move up two percent that that's the best case scenario um, but coin is currently at two hundred fifty dollars ninety nine cents. Thirty day IV is ninety one point seventy eight percent, which is pretty good. Thirty day chart a little crazy all over the place. Um, Coney price twenty six sixteen. Supposedly the halvings next week. Uh, we shall see. Capital appreciation for this week and next of uh, sixty nine cents. Obviously that would increase. Once we open the new position for next week, well, I'm assuming it would, depending on what strike they use. Coney Fund Manager is still a happy, you know, happy-go-lucky man or woman. They're, uh, you know, they're doing good. No complaints. All right. If we go to the payment detail, which, again, it's always early, but it's, it's important to look at it to see what the, you know, where we stand. Synthetic income, they're at 230000 Short call income, I got to freeze the pains. Short call income, 8.5 million. Net income, 8.7 million. Uh, we mentioned the outstanding shares. So the total income per share, 54 cents, or short call income alone, 52 cents. So not bad right now. Again, no, I can't complain on this fund. Um, so we mentioned the synthetic position. Uh, it expires next week, which is April 19th. Right now, the orange is the buy call. The pink is the sell put. If the orange is greater than the pink, we're going to make a profit uh, when all said and done. So right now, we're sitting pretty. The buy call, we could sell it for $20.5 million. The sell put, we can close it for $17.9 million. Hence, you know, the profit right there. Well, but again, they probably won't roll it. Uh, they're going to see if they can make a little more money out of it, maybe squeeze out of it. That's my thought i don't know what they're going to do you know but um we shall see the blue are the calls for the week however let's ignore the 419 one because that's you know that expires next week the 412 one 257.50 this uh will cost 320 to close as of today but obviously they're going to let that probably run down to friday net asset value 424.2 million the nav is 2615 and the trade price is 2616 
So that is Coney update. If we go to the internet and we check out coin, let's see how they're doing. Oh, they're up. So coin is up 0.88%. So that's actually perfect. We'll see. Uh, for context, right now, I'm actually a little later than usual. It's 5.55 a.m. I slept in a little um, because I'm tired as hell. That's why. Um, but either way, right now it's up 0.88% at 5.55 a.m. for coin. Next trade. The only other trade was Misty. Misty had three transactions. Buy call, sell put, sell call. They pretty much did exactly what coin did. When they sold the call for the weeklies, they chose next week as an expiration. So obviously the interest for Misty and the interest for Coney continues. Misty has a trade almost every day because people are just buying into that fund left and right. And I think we've all seen it, right? Let's look at the 1700, you know, they had like almost every day, right? 25th, 26th, 27th, 28th, 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 8th, 9th. So the the uh, interest is certainly there for Misty because there's a lot of hype around it after that $4 payment. But either way, they added 22 contracts to the synthetic position and this synthetic position also expires next Friday. However, it's not looking as good as Coney's because MSTR is priced at $1,566, but this strike price is $1,700. Um, I don't know if they could reach it, but if they do, great. Uh, as of right now, obviously, they're not really close to it. So the fact that they opened more um, you know, in this, in this position, they got a pretty big credit for the put, $462,000, and they only had to pay $88,000 for the call. So obviously this is good because we're bringing in income, but we need MSTR to continue to go up so we can somehow make a profit when all said and done. So April profits so far from the synthetic 2.3 million. Um, however, if they had to close it out today, they would lose 7.6 million, okay? So again, we'll get in more into the synthetic as we get closer. MSTR similar to uh, coin went up um, again. Yesterday, you know, people always say you're going to hedge these funds. You're going to hedge the stock market. Well, this is the hedge, I guess. Crypto is the hedge, apparently. Look at this. So MSTR is 8.6. Uh, MSTR went up 8.67%. MSTY went up 6.97%. So pretty, pretty damn good day. Um, here's the 22 contracts. They chose a 1635 strike that expires next Friday. So seven trading days. And they only went 4.41% out of the money. So very interesting there. I know it's only two, 22 contracts, but still. That produced a 3.58% yield. That's a pretty good yield for seven trading days. I mean, you can't even get that yield on your money for a year on most dividend ETFs. You know, this one is producing in seven days. Obviously, they need to win the transaction, but yet to be seen. Outstanding shares went up 100,000, um, which is pretty good. Cash and treasuries overall went up by 4.1 million. So the recap is uh, outstanding share total is 2.5 million. Total uh, income from the weeklies is 2.5 million. Distribution $1.2, daily income 17 cents, daily yield 0.46%, annualized yield 167%. So needless to say, this fund is performing very, very, very well. A lot of varies. Okay, here comes the mouthful. I might need some water. I know uh, you guys love when I drink water uh, in between the video. But that's part of it, right? Drinking water. All right. So first off, let me just cover the one for next week. That's 22 contracts, 1635 strike, 4.41% out of the money. We already talked about that. That expires in seven trading days. So that one's kind of irrelevant. So here's the ones that expire tomorrow, two days, two trading days. Here's the lowest, lowest to highest, 75 contracts, 1530 strike. This one's actually 2.3% of the money. 
So if all things stay, you know, they're probably going to lose out on this one. However, all the others are out of the money. So they have 40 contracts, 1650, 750 strike, 5.84% out of the money. 290 contracts, 1705 strike, 8.88% out of the money. And then they have 10 contracts, 1750 strike, 11.75% out of the money. And then 130 contracts, 1920 strike, 22.61% out of the money. This is what I love when they scatter the, you know, the strike prices around. Yes, 75 contracts is in danger of losing money, but look at all the others. They look pretty damn secure. If MSTR goes up, it's okay, right? When you have one strike, if it goes up above it, you're, you're just screwed in general, right? I mean, you're just going to lose money. But in this example, uh, MSTY has many strikes, so they could overall profit. We, oh, again, we'll see. But uh, at least it gives them a fighting chance. When you choose one strike, that's it. That's your hope. If you blow it, you blow it. MSTR price, 1566 even. 1566 30-day um, IV, 127%. 30-day chart, getting a little, a little hairy there, a little ugly. Uh, but still pretty damn good. Uh, Kony is currently at $36.99. Potential capital gains for this week and some of next. $3.89. $3.89 would push it above the $40 mark again. Really, really good stuff. Reaction is still the money man. You know, he's spitting out money. His tongue is green. He's a, he's a happy man. So it's a, it's, a, it's a good time. It's a good time if you own Misty. It's a good time if you run Misty. I got to meet the, the Misty fund manager. Imagine they can let, you know, let them on the... Uh, one of my live streams that would be that would be fun. I know Jay's obviously a good time, but he's he's done so many interviews. We kind of know what he's gonna say. Um, obviously, you know everyone pretty much likes him who, who's into these funds. But what about the people under him? You know, uh, we that those are the people you want to talk to. Uh, probably not gonna happen. So let's move on. Synthetic income two point three million. Short call income two point five million. Total net income four point eight million. Outstanding. So total income per share on all money is $1.95. Total income per share on the weeklies, $1.02. So again, what, what a run. What a run we got here. Just enjoy it. So um, again, we have a synthetic that expires next week. Of course, uh, I mentioned it's in danger of losing money. Uh, right now, it would cost $11.1 million to close the put. And you would only get 3.4 million to close, uh, I'm sorry, to sell the call. So obviously, you know, that's a loss right there, but we'll see how it goes. It could, it could recover still. Um, lots of calls in blue. I'm not going to get into details on those until tomorrow, maybe. Uh, but overall net asset value, 92.5 million. The NAV is 37.03 and the trade price is 36.99. So you get a four cent discount. All right, pre-market. Coin was up pre-market. Let's see what Mr. does. Again, right now, well, we'll see what time it is. Yeah. Last update, 6.03. Oh, Mr. down. Mr. is down 0.25% at 15.62. So we'll see how that goes. All right, back to the spreadsheet because there's no other trades. But let's talk about NVIDIA. <coughs> NVIDIA has a 915 uh, synthetic. Obviously, they did not add to it since there's no trades. Um, but right now, this synthetic expires May 17th, so they have plenty of time. But um, they're, they're priced below it, so they'd lose $18.5 if they had to close out the entire position, which obviously they don't. So let's just look at the April tab. All right, NVIDIA, you know... I guess NVIDIA is one of the few that went up. Uh, NVIDIA went up 1.97%. Good job, NVIDIA. NVIDIA went up 1.94%. Good job, NVIDIA. Wow, what a day. Uh, again, no trades, as you see. Uh, outstanding shares did not go up. So obviously, no trades. Uh, cash, this is confusing. Uh, cash, we had 59 million in cash yesterday. Um, not yesterday, two days ago. And then yesterday, they moved... A lot of it more than what they had into treasury so now they're negative they went from 59 million in cash to negative 46 million i mean 
I, I don't know. What are they doing? That doesn't make sense to me. But either way, cash and treasuries went down $80,000. So what? So can someone just explain this move? How can you have negative cash? Why would they put them in a put themselves in a position of negative cash. They're not going to make that on the weekly calls come Friday. You know, they don't make that much in one week. So maybe they'll correct it. I don't know. Because they, and they added to all three of them too. So that part confuses me. So if anyone has an answer, feel free to leave it in the comments. Um, outstanding shares, 15800000 Total income uh, is $3.8 million. Distribution per share, we're looking at $0.24. Cents. We make four cents a day per share. We yield 0.16%, and that's annualized of 56.7%. Obviously, with no trades, with no change, the annualized yield and daily yield will go down because you know we're not producing income for the day, but we're adding a day to the calculation. You know, come Friday, the number will look much better. Well, come the Saturday video, I should say. All right, here's where we stand for the week um, in order of lowest to highest. Lowest strike is 870. We have 160 contracts at 870. That's actually in the money by 0.04%. Then we have 520 contracts with an 895 strike. That's 2.83% out of the money. And then we have 4,070 contracts with a 910 strike. That's 4.55% out of the money. So it's getting a little close there. Uh, best case scenario really is NVIDIA you know, it can move up a very, very little amount, I would say. Uh, not too much, maybe 2% would be would be the sweet spot, but or it could stay where it's at. 30-day IV is 41%. Chart is kind of like trending down, as we know. NVIDIA is priced at 26.22, and we could get a remaining amount of capital appreciation of $1.10. Again, this is just based on my calculation. It's not 100% accurate. Clearly, we have proven that to be you know true in the past. My reaction, or their reaction, I should say, grinding their teeth because they're getting close, right? You know, they're, uh, one of them is in the money, but not by much, and it's the, uh, it's the smallest of the positions. So, so far, NVIDIA looks pretty good. All right. I have to freeze these two. If I don't do it now, it never gets done. So, synthetic income, what do we got? We got 2.9 million. Short call income, 3.8 million. Net income, 6.7. Pretty good. Total income per share, 43 cents. Total income on the weeklies, 24 cents. So, so far, so good. All right. So, their synthetic, again, expires May 17th. So, we don't really have to talk about that. And then they have three trades that expire this Friday, which, again, um, you see the $10.68 right? So that should be the lowest of the three, the lowest strikes. Obviously, that one costs more than the others to close at the very moment. But luckily, it's the smallest position. And we'll see how it goes. You know, today could be a red day. All right, net asset value for NVIDIA, 413 million. NAV is 26.17. Trade price, 26.22. Okay. Let's go to Market Watch. And let's refresh right now for context. It is 6.09 a.m., at least the last refresh. And NVIDIA is showing that it's in the red by 0.36%, and it's priced at 8.67.24, okay? Last but not least, Tesla. Tesla's been doing surprisingly well as of late, uh, but unfortunately, Tesla was part of that big sell-off yesterday. Um, so real quick on these synthetics, they have two positions, a 175 and a 170. Both expire May 17th. So again, I'm not going to get into, into that at the moment and because they didn't add any trades. So let's skip right to the April tab and see how they did. Um, overall, you know, not a terrible day. Tesla went down 2.89%. But if you look yesterday, it went up 2.25%. So, you know, it kind of washed out anything from the day prior, any gains. Um, Tesla only went down 1.42%, so that's not too bad. Um, so if we look here, outstanding shares did not move, stayed exactly the same. Cash and treasuries, they moved some cash into the treasuries um, as, ex you know, as they should. They did not go negative, so no complaints there. This all makes sense to me. 
uh, cash and treasury change, uh, a decrease of 159,000. So no big deal there. All right, summary, outstanding shares for Tesla, as mentioned, 45.7 million, no change. Uh, weekly income, I'm sorry, income from the weekly calls, 8.9 million. Distribution per share, 20 cents. Daily income uh, per share, 3 cents. Daily yield, 0.21%. Annualized yield, 78%. I will gladly take those numbers. So if we go to the active tab, we can see where we stand. We have two trading days. Obviously, today's one of them. And look at this. We're getting close. 20,980 contracts, 172.50 strike, 0.43% out of the money. So the fact that Tesla went down was actually a good thing for that position. So as we stand, we're good. And then the other one's really good. 20,135 contracts with a 182.50 strike, 6.25% out of the money. Again, both of these expire tomorrow. So where do we want Tesla price to end up? And I would say somewhere in between the two strikes, preferably closer to the 172.50 range. That way it wouldn't cost as much to close out that position. So, you know, if we close it like say 175, for example, I think that would work out well. Um, or if we stay exactly where we're at, that's perfect too. But either way, Tesla price is 171.76 as of the close yesterday. 30-day IV is 56.49%. 30-day chart is uh, crazy. That's all I can say on that one. Um, where did my, oh no, the earnings. Where did I put the earnings info? Oh, I think I have it in a different spot for the others. But Tesla price is 1530. Potential capital gains, 50 cents. My reaction or their reaction is same as the kind of the others. They're, it's getting close, grinding their teeth. Earnings date next week. Oh, no, not next week. The week after next week. Sorry about that. Curve, I did not check, to be honest. Um, but they ne almost never really update anything because there's probably not a lot of people buying into it, to be honest. Uh, but they have 101 contracts. Last I looked, 210 strike, 22.26% out of the money. Their synthetic expires July 19th, so they got plenty of time on that. Payment information, um, synthetic income, 545,000. Short call income, 8.9 million. Net income, 9.5. That is a total income per share of 21 cents. Short call income per share, 20 cents. So, fantastic. You know, again, Tesla doing very well. They don't produce, you know, the high yields as much as the others because they're not as volatile, but they're doing very well so far. Uh, I know, obviously, you know, reverse split it's been going down, but I have to say they have been doing pretty damn good as of late. So if you're a recent buyer, if you're if you're average, your cost basis is near or below where they at, they're at right now, you're you're probably a very happy person. All right, so we're not going to talk about this in synthetics because again, they expire on May seventeenth. Uh, the weekly calls, though, um, they expire in two days. You see the one only costs 15 cents. Obviously, that one's really, they're doing well on that. And the other costs 2 dollars 3 But again, they still have two trading days. So the time value um, will run, run these down, assuming Tesla doesn't skyrocket. Uh, net asset value, $698 million. The NAV is fifteen twenty eight, And the trade price is fifteen thirty. Okay? So that's Tesla. We can look at the uh, pre-market. It's getting later and later now. It's getting close to the launch time of the video, actually. Um, it's as of 6.13 a.m., Tesla price is at 170.72. Clearly, I need to get up earlier. Um, you know, 4 a.m. is really a sweet spot so I can wake myself up, do the spreadsheets, have coffee, and then do the video. And get it launched out a pretty decent time before the 6.30 a.m. mark. But right now, I'm just kind of close. So, yeah. Pre-market, Tesla is red. Um, if we go back to NVIDIA. NVIDIA is still red. Is this? Yeah, that's as of 6.14. If we go to MSTR, MSTR is red as of 6.15. And then coin, coin was green earlier. They're still green as of 6.15. So... Coin is the winner for the pre-market. But anyway, that's where we stand heading into tomorrow. Uh, two trading days. Uh, again, all four funds that I'm covering. 
at the moment are doing rather well. Uh, so if you own all four, congratulations. Um, they're doing they're doing good. Um, nothing more to say. Um, I know there's, again, there's a lot of hate on these funds, but if people ever ask why you invest in these, you know, and you watch my videos, hopefully you can explain down to the details, like what, why, what they do, how they make money, you know, and this is not something that like most people want to do on their own, like with their own money. Like this is something they'll be happy to pay 0.99% annually to, you know, to, to have them do this. Again, it's an income fund. Just keep that in mind, income fund. It's not a growth fund. Anyway, guys, this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. This video is for fun and entertainment. So if you had fun, if you were entertained, if you enjoy this content, always, always uh, hit the like button. Uh, again, I know I get a decent amount of views. Uh, I don't always get a decent amount of likes. So if you want to help the channel, if you want to keep this going, just please hit the like button. Um, Obviously, you know, it's a fair amount of work uh, to do on a daily basis, um, and I do enjoy doing it, but, you know, the appreciation comes via the like button, you know, it's not, it's, this is free, like it's on YouTube, you know, obviously there's ads that get posted and that helps the channel, you know, produce some revenue for myself. So that's, you know, that obviously helps me, um, you know, and motivates me even more, but hitting the like button would help for YouTube to share the content even more. Again, based on whatever algorithm they do, I should probably look into those details. I never I never even look at my stats, to be honest, much, but I just have to do the like reminder in case people forget, because I know if I don't, uh, people would probably forget. I always forget too, so I'm, I'm, I'm a culprit. Kind of a hypocrite, to be honest, but uh, either way, thank you for watching. If you made it this far, um, I guess today's key word, we could say the floors are almost done. Um, as mentioned yesterday's video, I'm getting the floors done. So I'll be working from home with a lot of banging today. Um, and today the floors should be done. So today's key word to prove that you made it to the end of the video is the floors are almost done, thankfully. Um, but either way, thank you for watching and have a great day. Later.